Whereas many women in Dallas have committed their lives to the advancement of women's rights, speaking out for equality even in the face of ridicule, especially the Honorable Sarah T. Hughes, a leader of women Sarah T. Hughes is one of five women in America who serve on the federal bench. She began her legal career in the 20s. She was not smart enough, she says, to know that women faced discrimination. Today, at 78, Judge Hughes is a heroine to the feminist movement. You know, I suppose that uh, there are discriminations which exist against women. At least I hear an awful lot about them. But you know, my motto is that you can do whatever you want to do if you want to do it badly enough. In her 13 years as a federal judge, Sarah Hughes has presided over a decade of social change. None was more important in her view than the abortion decision. It seems to have uh, aroused more interest uh, uh, throughout the uh, whole country than any other case that has been decided. Uh, there's so many people who want to uh, change the uh, Constitution and uh, uh, change uh, the law and all sorts of things in order to get around the, uh, the decision. But I believe that in the end, uh, the decision will uh, be upheld. Uh, Sarah Hughes may be best remembered as the one who swore in Lyndon Johnson as president, November 22nd, 1963. And when I went out there, and I went in my car, uh, I had several thoughts in my mind. One was that I had to get there as fast as possible because I know what an impatient individual Vice President Johnson uh, was. It, nobody said anything. I went uh, into the second compartment where uh, Johnson was and Lady Bird. We didn't say anything, except that uh, Mr. Johnson said, we want to wait for uh, Mrs. Kennedy. So we did, waited about five minutes until she appeared. And then he had his wife stand on his right and Mrs. Kennedy on his left, and I stood in front of him. Lyndon Johnson and Sarah Hughes were longtime political friends. Judge Hughes has also had her longtime political enemies. Some of them are at Dallas County Commissioner's Court. Tensions rose there when Judge Hughes ordered the commissioners to make improvements in the jail. And this is taxpayer dollars, and I'm a little sick and tired of everybody else spending the taxpayer dollars. We've got the order that we've got to comply with. And if you show me where you're going to get the money, I'll vote for it. And I'm not going to do it with every other service in this Dallas County okay. in order to comply and make a few prisoners. County Judge Lou Starrett turned the case into a personal confrontation with Hughes when he challenged her to send him to jail. I would have led a pretty decent life. And, and uh, when any court can take another official and place him in jail for not doing what the people don't want to do, then we're in bad shape. You're not going to like that way of life. I'm not about to send Judge Starrett to, to jail. I don't think I'm going to have to. I think he's going to do uh, what he's directed to do. Of course, he's going to dislike it, and he's going to uh, talk, continue to talk some, I think, although I believe he's going to talk less now than he did before the decision came out. I think he used some language that he shouldn't have used. That the, It just showed a lack of knowledge. He really didn't know what he was talking about when he said the federal courts didn't have authority to do uh, this, that, and the other thing. He knew he was wrong or should have known it. Judge Starrett charged that Hughes's order to provide recreational facilities for the prisoners will turn the jail into a country club at taxpayers' expense. Judge Hughes said nothing publicly in reply, but she did fight back in a way when she found the right I, I forum. I feel honored, uh, uh, but I don't want you to put me on the shelf. Don't think that you're retiring me just because you're honoring me tonight. <laughs> Thank you.
you know, I'm gonna have a long life because I've got to see this jail situation through. <laughs> And, and from the looks of the plan that I uh, semi-approved the other day, it looks as if I may have to wait some time before the jail really is made into a country club. <laughs> Sarah Hughes started her public career in the Texas legislature in 1931. She became a state judge four years later, but the law-making branch of government remained her real passion. I would have preferred to be in the legislative branch. That's where the action was. And I felt like I could uh, do more. And I did do a lot for Dallas County and for the, for the state, I think. Hughes ran for Congress in 1946. She collided with Dallas conservatives and was defeated. Have you ever felt a sense of frustration here? Felt out of step with the city? Or the city out of I step know. with you? I don't uh, think so. I, I have realized that I disagreed with the uh, uh, powers that be, as it were, but uh, I suppose I uh, just uh, come up fighting. I don't uh, let it defeat me. The secret of Sarah Hughes's success at 78 is her overriding sense of purpose. I think my mother had more influence on me than, than perhaps anybody because uh, she never recognized uh, uh, obstacles. Uh, she always told me that I could do whatever I wanted to do. And then she was a uh, disciplinarian. Uh, as far as your life is concerned, you should discipline yourself. Judge Hughes does discipline herself. She rides her bicycle every morning for 15 minutes, or she swims 30 laps. She stays in such good shape that younger colleagues have trouble keeping up with her. She runs her life with clock-like efficiency, even on the weekends. How are you all this morning? On Saturday mornings, she arrives at Safeway minutes before the doors open. How are you this morning? How are you? Fine, nice and wet. Oh, isn't it a mess? She's the first one in and the first one out. And that's the way she wants it to be. Oh, I thought you might be not going to let me in. Where's the rice? Next stop. Next stop. If her philosophy of life is rigid self-discipline, her philosophy of law is flexibility and fairness. I must say that I think I follow the philosophy of Chief Justice uh, Warren. Uh, I don't think that he was such a student of the law. And I know I'm not a student of the law. I don't care about uh, research for research's sake. The only what, a reason that I'm interested in the law is what it can do for people. And I think that that was his, his, uh, his chief idea. What can this, what will this, case do for people and if you can decide that you can de usually decide the outcome of the case. Judge Sarah T. Hughes likes to be early and she likes to get there first. In some ways she's been too early for her times. If she were younger she might well have become the first woman on the United States Supreme Court.